I mentioned that we're going to be talking about all of the, the little things that moms do. And, and it's, a, it's a great day to celebrate uh, Mother's Day. It's, it's a good thing to have because, you know, we really could be celebrating it every day because moms really do have to work every day. They don't do one day a year and then they get a day for a reward. There is so much that goes into being a mother. And this is also can be a, a challenging day for some people. Maybe you've lost your mother recently and miss her dearly. And this can be a challenging day. It can be a challenging day in, in many ways. Today we're thinking about all of the things that moms do that we don't necessarily pay attention to. And we're going to start by thinking about that verse that we read together from Scripture, the Christmas story, where it says that Mary brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And that's all. That's all that Mary ever did for the Lord, right? Laid him in a manger. And then the Lord took over, right? The Lord could just raise himself because he was God, right? No, there was still the feeding. There was still the love. There's still the holding, the warmth, the protection, the thinking about all of what's going on. You know, Mary probably didn't have a whole lot of time but if she were to write the first gospel of Mary about those first days, it might read something like, ah, he was crying again, so I tried to feed him and put him down for the night. Verse 2, we only got two hours of sleep last night. Verse 3, how many times am I going to need to change the Lord today? Verse number 4, how does everybody else in the world know about this and why are they coming to visit? Day after day, moms have to wake up, and the first thing that has to come into their mind is often what their children need that day. Children wake up and they go, what do I want right now? Parents wake up, moms in particular, and go, what do I need to do to care for my children today? And yet in the Gospels, in our stories, we don't get very much about Mary, the mother of the Lord. But there is enough to, to notice that the Lord, I think, sees how much of this work that moms do goes unrecognized. And in part, it's by not talking very much about it. By the absence of stories about Mary being this caring mom, doesn't that also kind of point out moms do a lot of things that just never get noticed? But they're little hints. There was no room for them in the inn. What does that mean? A mom begins by being the shelter, the house of their child. They put them, they hold them in their bodies, protect them. And then once they come out and are delivered, they still have that same job of caring and protecting. What if there's no room? What do we do? We care and protect. Joseph has a dream right after that from the Lord and says, it's not safe here. Can you imagine being a young mother and being in a position where you have to take your child and escape to another country for years? Different language. Still needed to feed, care for, protect, love, comfort. There are lots of jobs that moms have to do that just go unnoticed. I'd like to pause for a second, and as a child, if you're thinking about what are some of these things that moms have to do all the time that perhaps I don't notice. Well, maybe you do notice them, but in different ways. Do you ever get annoyed when mom has to tell you again, brush your teeth before you go to bed? Brush your teeth. Please, brush your teeth. Can you brush, have you brushed your teeth yet? I don't think you told me the truth that you brushed your teeth. Please go brush your teeth before you go to bed. Those types of things are not things that moms necessarily want to have to tell us ten times before it happens, right? But moms still have to keep up with it. Why? Because there's this 
love inside of them that tells them, I need to think not just about tonight. It would be easier to just forget about brushing the teeth tonight. You know what? It would be easier to not cook dinner tonight, too. I'm tired. You know what? Forget lunches for the kids while they go off to school. These little things that perhaps we get annoyed, Mom, do I have to? are the things that almost always demonstrate mom's love more than anything else. I remember my mom used to hate punishing me because it made her feel punished. If, if she grounded me, I was probably annoying enough that she's like, just get out of the house, please. The things that moms do against their own inner, I would much rather just take a, a rest. There's a love there that is so powerful, and it comes right from the Lord. If you have your program with you, I'd like to read a little bit from this number, Apocalypse Explained, number 710. It says, the mother's womb represents the inmost good of love, because this is where the fetus is conceived and developed until birth. It is also the inmost of the reproductive organs, and from it also the maternal love that is called storge. That is where it's derived. Since a person who is being regenerated is also conceived and carried, as it were, in the womb and born, and since regeneration is affected by means of truths from the good of love, Therefore, to bear in the womb, in the spiritual meaning, signifies the doctrine of truth from the good of love. Another way to think about this is how do moms have their intuition? Have you ever heard of a mother's intuition? The end of that says that the womb represents in specific the doctrine of truth from the good of love. So moms have an intuition about what should be done from the good of love that the Lord puts in them. Isn't that a wonderful thing? It gives mothers this ability to kind of know about their children and to care for them in particular ways. And the more connected they are to the Lord, the better they are at doing this job. So I want to go back to our thoughts about Mary doing all of this work for the Lord, and yet we don't get very many statements about it. We get a few, so I wanted to read through some of these. We have the one where the Lord is born, right? And she wraps him in swaddling clothes and lays him in a manger. We also have when the shepherds come, and when the wise men come to visit, and we get little things about Mary, when this happens, when the shepherds come, we learn in verse 16 of the Gospel of Luke in chapter 2, they came with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen them, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled by the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Hmm. Doesn't that sound a lot like from that love that the Lord puts in moms, thinking about how can I help? How can I care for my children in this environment with these people coming over? So she keeps these things and ponders them in her heart. There's a lot of jobs that moms do that go beyond feeding and protecting and caring. And this is what our service is really thinking about. There are the natural level things that moms do, but then there's the transition to how do I help this baby become a child to become an adult? And hopefully an angel in heaven. And so they have to start thinking not just about the food and water and safety and protection, they have to start thinking about how do I teach my children these lessons? How do I raise them with an idea of what's right and wrong? So she ponders these things in her heart. I 
after the Lord grew up and he became an adult, he was walking through a crowd and people started to know who he really was. And perhaps a mother in this crowd recognized, you know, some mother must have been an amazing mom to that person. To the Lord. Somebody must have been an amazing mother to that. And she cries out from the crowd. She says, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts that nursed you. And you would think that Jesus would just go, Yes, I had a wonderful mother. It did. It sounds in our reading, though, and I wanted to read this, that it seems a little bit like he's not giving her a whole lot of credit. But I want to come back and and share that he really is. In this story, it says, And it happened as he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nursed you. But he said, More than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Is he saying, yeah, my mom might have fed me and carried me, but it's not really about that. Is that what he's saying? Or is he saying, yeah, she did those things, but she also raised a person who knew the Lord and was willing to follow him, who heard the word of God and would do it. What if this is a recognition that Mary went far beyond that, that she was everything he needed her to be? And in his providence, she was chosen for this reason, just like every mom that's in this room has been chosen by the Lord to raise their children. And this is a wonderful thing to think about, not just in the statement that the Lord's saying, my mom did more than just carry me and nurse me, my mom showed me the scriptures and gave me an environment where I could learn. And we find out about that when the Lord is 12. He must have had enough independence that his mom was like, you know, you go out there and do your thing, but then a new job comes up. Mom is not just feeder, provider, protector, caregiver. She has to become private investigator. The Lord's found in Jerusalem teaching in a synagogue. She didn't know where he went. She's going, where is where is he? He's a 12-year-old boy off in the middle of a city. So she finds him, and there he is, teaching other people from the Lord's Word. What a beautiful thing. The Lord's mother was there every step of the way, and yet there's not a whole lot said about it. I want to share one more story of the Lord's mother and add one more job that often goes unnoticed, is how much our moms are coaches, motivators, ones that know when to push us out of the nest. It's a story in the Gospel of John about the very first miracle that the Lord did, the first sign that the Lord provided that he was the Lord. And who was it that pushed him out of the nest? It was his mother. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no more wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour is not come. Does it sound like he's not quite ready to do his, his miracle? My hour has not yet come. But she knows. In verse 5, it says, His mother then said to the servant, Whatever he says to you, do it. She knew this was his time. Now there were six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. And Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, 
that the servants who had drawn the water knew. The good master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of the signs of Jesus, this was the beginning of the signs that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and it manifested his glory. Wow. It's kind of cool to look at Mary's story and what isn't said of her. Just these little snippets can show how much she really was a part of the Lord's life. And we are told in the heavenly doctrines that the Lord grew up just like any other child, had to be cared for just like any other child. Now, we have a lot of moms in our room here, and all of us have responsibilities, and all of us have things that we do with our own children that we probably know, well, I I have to get up and do this. I have to tell my kids to brush their teeth again. I have to do their lunches again, and I have to make sure they have dinner again. There's lots of those natural things. But as we think about what are the more important things that we're doing as parents, as mothers, is raising children to God. How along those ways are we going up that scale from the natural needs to those spiritual needs, to provide an opportunity to learn from the Lord, to seek him out when we are in a time of trouble. In the end, we hope that our children will have the capability, the strength in their faith, and and the love in their hearts to follow through with living a good life. And for that reason, I wanted to close with reading part of Psalm 22, which speaks of a person in a time of trial in their own life, but recognizing what they've been provided with since the time that they were born. And this is a Psalm of David, so we can think about this also being the Lord's own emotions, thinking about being brought up to know the Lord, to know his mission. This is Psalm 22, beginning in verse 6 saying, I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip and they shake the head saying, he trusted in the Lord, let him rescue himself. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb, you have, met, you have been my God. <clears throat> Be not far from me, for trouble is near. Think about, as a parent, as a mother, your children being in a place where they have the tools to confront their own troubles and to come away victorious to know that they can turn to the Lord and his word to find the path forward through anything. There are many jobs that mothers do, and the results of good mothering in both natural and spiritual ways, it's not that in the end nothing bad will happen, or that the children will be making every good choice possible but that when our children have been raised to the Lord, they will know who to turn to in their time of trouble. Amen. Um, I'd like for us to move towards